Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. If you just joined us, I have likened Jesse Ventura to Rosa Parks. I likened Miss USA, who went to the Dallas airport, and they, they went in her panties and and touched her genitals, she broke down and cried, and then they made fun of her. They had to settle with a woman in Amarillo where they pulled her blouse off and made comments about her breast. They put uh, notes in people's bags uh, saying, uh, hey, I'd like to basically have sex with you. Hey, you know, get your freak on, girl. Um, I've had TSA make fun of me and make little snide comments. I've watched Jesse Ventura in Atlanta where they went up between his legs. Ron Paul says it's done the same thing to him. He's a medical doctor. I've had medical exams, it's, and, and, and quite frankly, it's, it's disturbing, even when it's your doctor, and you're like a cow they're checking uh, to have them you know, check for hernias and things and, 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 and do what they do. And uh, last year, we had airline pilots who said, that's it, our union, we're going to boycott, we're not going to fly. They reported that former combat pilots would have to go home and would throw up in their parking lots, in some cases, after they were groped. Because people, they, you know, they say, get tough, take it, get tough. This is about humiliating people. This is about getting in your space. And I've watched Governor Ventura while they laughed and giggled and said, it's the governor. And, you know, basically wanted autographs and stuff in Atlanta. As he said, this country's like East Germany now. This is why I go to Mexico part of the year. And, and it, it was all a big joke to them. It's all very funny. TSA two weeks ago when I was flying out of Vegas for meeting with Governor Ventura, uh, they... You know, the guy said to me, he said, I have administrative rights. You basically don't have rights. And now the TSA is announcing checkpoints in America. And I, and I want Governor Ventura to continue to elaborate on this martial law situation in his own words. But now uh, he's got breaking news today. He's now learned exactly what went down and, and, and how the judge sat on it for a certain period. So it couldn't even go to the Court of Appeals, even if he wanted to go to the Star Chamber. Now, notice, under this federal law that gives the TSA all this martial law power, you don't get a jury trial now. It goes right to the Court of Appeals. So this is a new system of government. You got the Star Chamber Super Congress now that originates the spending bills. All of this centralization of power is happening, and he's going to cover the waterfront here with us. A, there's been a national media blackout. B, when he does local news, he's going to tell you what happens to him. Uh, they misconstrue what he says, take it out of context. Uh, it's incredible. So he's got a whole raft of things we'll cover in the next hour. And we will open the phones up specifically for people that have a question for Jesse Ventura as well. Uh, but uh, Governor, chin up. We appreciate you taking action. We appreciate you boycotting the airlines and taking a stand for everybody. But Rosa Parks was being made to sit at the back of the bus. Imagine if they were saying, well, we don't, we're going to grab your breast and stick our hands down your pants and put you in a microwave oven. This is far more than that. This is a civil rights issue of our Fourth Amendment, of the Tenth Amendment, states' rights. I mean, you're a governor. I want you to speak to that. Governor, you've got the floor here. Tell us what's happening. Well, Alex, thank you. First of all, uh, it seems I'm running into a brick wall with the media. Uh, mainstream media won't discuss the case. They don't think it's relevant at all. In fact, I was due to do CNN yesterday, and I was bumped because, of course, the big trial verdict was coming down in the Michael Jackson case. You know, and so that has more importance. And I said to the person via second person at the CNN, I said, well, I completely understand. After all, mine's simply a constitutional issue. Why would that take pre 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 preference over, you know, Michael Jackson's verdict on uh, his drug overdose? You know, but that's, that's our pop culture media. Uh, locally, I did a radio show yesterday where the local guy Williams on WCCO-TV or radio in Minnesota equated me to being Kim Kardashian, and that I was doing all this simply for publicity for my television show. This entire 
a court case. Incredible. You know, I guess my children have never flown and my wife hasn't <laughs> flown in nine years uh, just because of the searching, not, not much less the groping now. I guess we never get to fly anywhere and visit places uh, because we want publicity as well. I don't know, you know, but that that's what I'm going up in. Excuse my voice, Alex. I'm battling a bit of a sore throat, but uh, <laughs> that's what I'm going up against in the media, and you're really my only outlet right now. I, you know, I laughingly kidded you about it last week, but it's it's actually come true that uh, I think I'm going on tomorrow with Judge Napolitano on Fox. He's one of the decent guys out there. You know, and he's going to have me on tomorrow, and I'm sure the judge will want to talk about this, and we'll get his opinion, because he's a legitimate judge, or was before he took his TV show. You know, so uh, we'll get his opinion on what just went down on it. But other than Judge Napolitano and you, I really have no media at all, because they're avoiding this like the plague, because I, I have to believe they're part of it, too. Well, it's the same media that told us Iraq had WMDs, Governor. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's the same media that has lied to us constantly, the same media that, you know, uh, takes our news and twists it to, to political, whatever way it needs to go. It's the same media that won't take pictures of our dead bodies coming home, but they will happily show you multiple pictures of Muammar Gaddafi getting shot in the head. But they won't show any of our troops that come home in body bags or American flags on the caskets because, naturally, there's a price that we're paying also for these wars. There is. Now, now you dropped a bombshell on me. This is, this, this is newsworthy. Uh, uh, you've had time to flesh this out with your lawyer now. Uh, specifically, talk about the setup. Talk about what the judge did. Uh, you were explaining to me earlier how she sat on this because I was gov. Even if it's a star chamber, go ahead and still take it to the star chamber and say, okay, let's see what the star chamber is going to do. And you said no. I no. can't. Uh, tell folks. Well, because apparently there's a statute of limitations that when you file the case, you have 60 days in which to take it to the Court of Appeals. Well, the, I filed the case last January, and the judge didn't even rule on it till a week or so ago. So my statute of limitations, my attorney took, explained it best to me. It's a catch-22. And so this is how they're avoiding anyone going and having a jury trial. What they're telling, and I'm speaking to all your listeners, Alex, what they're telling you is this, that you as citizens cannot perform like the elitists that they are, that you are not capable of making a constitutional decision. So therefore, they will not let any constitutional decision go to a jury. I cannot have a jury trial. They're not allowing me. They threw me out of court, and they did it in, in a non-timely fashion. They waited 10 months so that my 60 days after filing to go to the Court of Appeals would then expire, as I understand it. You know, it, while I'm waiting for her to do the decision. Now, if your listeners want to voice opinion about Judge Nelson, feel free to do so. It's Judge Nelson in the St. Paul uh, uh, District of the Federal Court. She's the same woman that initially did the same judge that handled the National Football League. The first one to make a ruling on it. So, you know, if they want to email her, call her, write. I'm actually, Alex, you know, I've gone down four times now with the picket Wall Street people in Minneapolis. Uh, and uh, But I'm going to switch. I'm not going down there anymore. In my spare time now, I'm going to go over to the St. Paul Federal Courts building, and I'm going to walk by myself with my own sign. And my sign is going to say, I could get equal treatment in Cuba. Well, it's true. And you know, because I feel that way. I feel that if I were in Cuba, I couldn't be treated any worse than what I'm being treated here in not being allowed to go in front of a jury of my peers of citizens. Because that's all I am now. I am Jesse Ventura Citizen. And, uh... I can't go in front of a jury of my peers and have them decide whether my constitutional Bill of Rights Fourth Amendment is being violated.
because the government won't let me. Now that's oppression. That is not freedom. That is not... Our founding fathers, I couldn't imagine what they would think about this decision. Well, you're right, and now they're announcing, hey, we've been using OnStar to listen to you without warrants. Hey, those smart meters, they can track what you're watching on television. That That's mainstream. Well, how about the Viper teams now in Tennessee? I just saw it on the Internet, the TSA Viper teams. Tennessee just passed at the state of Tennessee, apparently, where these TSA people are going to be out on the highways now. Yeah, they're codifying it. Uh, and they're using the old, they're using, you know, the old bus way or the old truck weigh-in spots that, you know, those places they always used to weigh the trucks. Yeah, they're using those. Those are going to be the new operational things where the TSA is going to operate. So get ready, people. If you sit back, go, oh, well, it's just us airport people. It's just those people that fly that are going to be stepped on by this TSA Gestapo type living that they're putting upon us. Uh, well, it's not. Now it's going to the highways. Now, they're, now don't be surprised if you get pulled over. And they said they're going to have uh, uh, sniffing dogs out there, too. Oh, they've at, 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 at uh, all over the Texas coast, hundreds of miles from the border. You take any little ferry over, they search your whole car, pull you out. But now, as you said, all over the U.S., in the middle of the country, uh, I've seen it on the news. They pull families out, and now they say they're going to start groping. Uh, they've got federal grants uh, where they start taking blood at checkpoints. Now, they now admit, Kathleen Sebelius admits, they're going to merge the, the, the Department of Health and Human Services with Homeland Security and do forced inoculations, Gov. That's what this is really all about. Uh, you, you know, used to... Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep it at my level, Alex, simply that, they, that the fact is that we I have to fight it at this level. The, the fact that they will not allow me to, to take my freedom into a courtroom and to, to have a ruling on my Fourth Amendment of reasonable search and seizure. And that's where I'm sticking with mine. I'm, you know, I, I got to focus on what I can focus on and what directly affects me the most and what I can do about it. So that's all I'm going to focus on. I can't get into the inoculations and all that type of stuff, although it wouldn't surprise me because, as I said, let me clear up a few things. You know, the, the press has been misquoting me saying how I'm going to give up my U.S. citizenship. I never once stated that. I simply stated I was going to apply for Mexican citizenship, my wife and I, over the fact that we live half the year down there anyway. I might as well have dual citizenship. And yet the media has twisted it, meaning, but I did absolutely say that I will never stand for the national anthem again, and that if I do, I will take the pose of Tommy Smith and John Carlos. The two Olympians in 68, if you were old enough, who shocked the world when they won gold and bronze and stood up with a fist, a closed fist and with a black glove in the air and bowed their heads in shame that they were winning a gold medal for a country that wouldn't even give them their civil rights. And that's kind of how I feel right now. I live in a country that won't even give me my rights, my constitutional rights. Well, I bow my head in shame and raise a black fist into the air. Well, it will certainly get their attention. And I think this is breaking news here that that because I searched and searched and finally found one person who would put your whole speech on the Internet. Uh, the, the, the Associated Press and others edited it. And then when I talked to you, you weren't saying I'm giving up my U.S. citizenship. You were saying that... Well, I'll just try to get dual citizenship, and you know, at least so I have some place to go to sometimes and spend more time in Mexico, or I can totally fight it and, and, and you know, run for president. And, I, and, and so I think that's a major issue, because and, 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 and they've tried to demonize you now and claim that you hate America. No, no, these are the people destroying what America stands for, the Bill of Rights and Constitution, so they turn it around and now try to say, you're the anti-American, and I have all these headlines. Here's one I, of them. I am, Alex. I am anti-America when my country won't let me go to court, yes. Well, let's be and specific. I think, and I think the first, if the First Amendment is still out there, if that even exists, don't I have the right to be able to 